Opening up with our sponsor disclosure, this video is brought to you by Digital Storm. But Linus, you might say, uh, that's not a Digital Storm box. And I would reply, yes, this uh, <laughs> is a brand new PC gaming brand called Redux. Their pitch is simple. They build you a custom gaming rig with off the shelf premium quality parts, like for example, this Prime Z490P motherboard from Asus and only mark up the system $75. That's right, 75 bucks gets you the build, two years of warranty and do you get any tech support? Uh, move, I hate the overhead rigging. Ah! Oh shoot, I'm fine. Oh wait, our team of in-house gamers will get you back up and running if you run into any issues. So, I guess that includes tech support as well. Ow, that really hurt. I just pulled the foam out and put my hand under it. I will be very interested to see what kind of build quality we can expect from a $75 build machine. You know, what's interesting is this is very similar to the model that we had for NCIX PCs way back in the day. It was $25 to just put the hardware together, no validation, no operating system install, uh, $50 to install the OS and configure drivers and all of that. And then I think we actually upped it to like 75 and 100 later on down the line. So 75 US dollars for a completely assembled system. We also only offered a one year warranty at that price with two year warranty looks very attractive, especially if the uh, sponsor of this video, Digital Storm, has anything to do with it. To start with, this is a pretty attractive looking chassis. Seems to be a variation of the TD500 mesh from Cooler Master with a little bit of custom branding on it. So you can see they've got a custom badge on the front. I can tell you for $75 per build, you actually cannot afford to do a whole lot of custom branding, but they still managed to spend a couple of bucks on one of these expanding foam uh, packing pieces to hold your graphics card in place. And, oh, look at that. <laughs> They've actually customized the AIO cooler as well as, oh, did they do the fans too? Where's my packing material at? You know what, I'm kind of surprised at this. I was all ready to say, oh, well, you know, maybe they should have spent a bit more on the packing, but uh, this might just be a case where the courier drop kicked it because you can see one of the back thumb screws got kind of bashed in, but Redux is actually using a nice high quality foam here. So uh, double boxing might have solved it or just having thumb screws that stick out a little bit less. You can see there's kind of like a spacer on this that makes it so they stick out quite a lot. That'd probably be the solution to that. Um, either way, it's not the kind of thing that affects the aesthetics of the build once it's in place. It's just something that is a bummer when you get a new system and one of the thumb screws is kind of bopped into the back. Okay. You can definitely see some of the pedigree here. Like that is some pretty nice cable management. Included with this case is an RGB, wait, no, not included with this case. How very interesting. DSPCB. Uh, I wonder what DS is short for. Hold on a minute. No, this seems to be custom. If I had to guess, I'd say it's either for Digital Storm or Design Spark, which is a PCB making company. So uh, could be either way. I'm actually I'm just gonna pull it off. If the, look, if they didn't want it torn down, they wouldn't send it to me. No markings on the back. All right, no, well, that doesn't tell us anything useful then. Let's go ahead and plug their stuff back in. Yes, Brandon, that is an RTX 3080. These are rarely seen out in the wild. Uh, certainly a coveted addition to any gaming PC. That is, at least for the time being, uh, at the time of shooting this video, AMD had announced, but not yet actually released their RDNA 2 uh, Radeon RX 6000 graphics card. So we'll have to see how that goes over the next little bit. But there's a couple of noteworthy things about this build. Aside from the cable management being, well, frankly, Excellent. The attention to detail is just outstanding. So we've got a positive air pressure configuration with three intake fans at the front, one exhaust fan at the back, and then we're gonna have passive exhaust out the top of the case. That's all pretty normal other than just being done correctly. But look at this. 
Has Digital Storm been watching Gamers Nexus? Look at the orientation of this all-in-one cooler. Got them tubes at the bottom, so just in case there's any air bubbles that are stuck in the loop from filling at the factory, they're gonna settle here in this tank at the top of the reservoir instead of getting stuck in your pump, causing it to be louder and potentially have a shorter lifespan. Also noteworthy is the appropriate amount of slack on cables like these front panel connectors and this SATA cable here. One of the just sort of classic blunders that we made back in my NCIX days was having technicians that would go, okay, I've got everything plugged in. Now I'm gonna put my zip ties on, right? I'm gonna do a great job of cable managing this system. And they cinch the zip ties tight. And what they would actually do is they would put so much tension on the plug that what would happen in shipping is yeah, you wouldn't believe the amount of flex that even something as rigid looking as this will undergo. During shipping, the system would flex and it would actually pull them out. And the customer would get it and go, oh, what, did you guys not ship me a hard drive or what? Because the system wouldn't boot or it wouldn't turn on because the power plug had been pulled out. So you can see that Redux has actually gone and put an appropriate amount of slack on all of the cables here to make sure that they don't accidentally just pop out during shipping. In terms of accessories, ah, there we go. I found them. Oh, this is interesting. It's like uh, an acrylic GeForce RTX SAG reduction doodad. Well, cool, we should put that on. I've uh, got some extra screws, motherboard manual, power cord for the power supply, as well as any additional modular cables we might want. Oh, there's a little nubbin in here that's kind of getting in the way. Uh, Okay, these are not for cutting acrylic. Oh, watch the whole thing crack now. It was even a pretty successful cut. Like it looks pretty clean. Dang it. Put this arm here. I think I got it, I think I got it. It's fired up. Oh, they're RGB fans. Nice. Those are pretty nice looking. These are Cooler Master Master fans. Just little things. Like you can see even this back fan, it runs like, under the VRM heatsink, so you can't really see it running down to the uh, case fan header back here. The brown backplate on this PNY Accelerate is a bit of a shame. PNY, if you're watching, brown, like. Now let's try to figure out the point of this RGB controller. I have to assume that, because I know Digital Storm uses these just like uh, RGB remotes for their systems still, just so that you don't have to have any ugly bloaty software. Um, I have to imagine that this just accidentally ended up in my thing because it's part of their standard package. I'm sure they'll have that sorted out before they're shipping Redux systems off the website. There's nothing to really see, Brandon. There's um, no bloat whatsoever. The closest thing to bloat would be the Microsoft Solitaire collection, which is included with Windows. I don't even have any like uh, Candy Crush King.com nonsense in here. So we've got GeForce Experience, Microsoft Edge. Wow, not bad. And then the homepage is obviously a website that's uh, not launched yet. So by the time you guys go to buildredux.com, it will actually be something. Oh, I guess now's as good a time as any to talk specs on this thing. It's a Core i7-10700K with an RTX 3080, so I am expecting to be able to max out the 360 hertz refresh rate of this display. It's got 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz memory. It's kind of a custom build from them because it's got an upgraded graphics card compared to their high-end spec. So it's got a 500 gig M.2 from a data, as well as two terabytes of mechanical storage. So that'll cover all of your gaming needs. And then it's got a 600 watt power supply, which might seem like an odd choice for an RTX 3080, but if you bear in mind that this is supposed to have an RTX 3070 in it, then it's probably fine. Now, what I wanna know is if this is even gonna work because we've seen 750, even 850 watt units just buckle under the momentary current spikes from these RTX 3000 series cards. So uh, I guess we'll find out soon enough. I am really big into the tinted glass with RGB look. Oh, that poor power supply. I was trying to figure out why it was running so loud because most RTX 3000 cards are pretty reasonable and it's got like a dual 120 mil AIO on it. It's that poor 600 watt power supply. Okay. I wouldn't expect to have that issue on a final system though. What are we looking at here? 350 to 400 FPS and 75 bucks to build a machine like that. Not 
too shabby. Now, if it was some random, honestly, I would look at it and I'd go, ah, they gotta be cutting corners somewhere. But knowing who it, well, is <clears throat> behind the scenes, 75 bucks, eh? Uh, I. <laughs> Now, obviously, when they say no markup, they mean compared to a retail price at another store where presumably they are making at least some margin, but that's still very competitive with building it on your own, obviously, especially when system integrators are, as far as I can tell, the only ones that can actually get access to these bloody video cards right now. So if you're looking for a gaming rig, no matter what game it is, once their website's up, they're gonna have a feature where you can basically just plug in what games you play and what kind of performance you want and it'll suggest a rig for you. Makes the whole experience much, much simpler than configuring everything on your own. Again, for 75 bucks, like, okay. Where's that blow up thing? Dang it, I missed it. Oh yeah, subscribe to Short Circuit. Sorry, I got distracted playing video games.